Hello, my name is Chris Hammond, and I'm the Director of Training here with .NET Nuke Corporation. In this brief video, we're going to show you how to place a module onto a page in .NET Nuke, one of the most basic functions within DNN, but really a function you need to understand to be able to add and maintain content to a page. So we're going to be using .NET Nuke Professional 5.6.0, but everything we do in this video applies to .NET Nuke Community Edition as well. So we're going to be utilizing the control panel in .NET Nuke to select a module, configure a couple settings, and then place the module on a page. And then after that, I'll show you how you can move the module on the page as well. In a future video, we'll go into module-specific settings and how to maintain those. So over here, we have a clean installation of .NET New Professional 5.6.0. You can see we have the default home page here. Now, out of the box, the default home page has three modules on it. One module here at the top with the image and the four buttons down below. And then beneath that, we have a getting started section and a sponsor section. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add an additional module to this page. And we'll place it above these existing modules. So when you're going to place a module on a page, you're going to utilize the control panel. And I'm logged in with admin rights currently. We're currently in edit mode. And within the common tasks tab of the control panel, I'm going to come over here to the insert module section. Now we have a couple options here. We can choose to add a new module or an existing module. New means we're going to place a fresh copy of a module on a page that we can then go through and configure content. Existing means that we can copy a module from an existing page. So we're going to utilize new. And then we get to choose which type of module we'd like to place on the page. Well, .NET Nuke out of the box comes with a number of different modules installed, as well as additional modules that you can install and utilize. In, an, in a future video, we'll go through some of those additional modules and get them placed on the page. But for now, we'll come in here. And we'll choose the HTML Pro module. It's one of the most basic modules and one of the most powerful modules in .NET Nuke. You have the ability to edit and maintain HTML content or to use the rich text editor and just be able to maintain content in a word-like interface. So we're going to choose the type of module. And then we're going to go ahead and give that module a title. The title will typically show up above the module, depending on the container that's in use on that module and on that page. Now, when we place a module on a page, we get to choose a visibility. We need to control whether this module is going to be visible to people who can view the page, which is the same as page option, or if the module will be visible only to page editors. Now, oftentimes, if you're setting up a page or you're setting up an existing site, you might want to add a module that's only available to page editors. That way you can go through, configure the content, get it prepped, and once you're done, then you can change permissions to make the module available to all users who can view the page. So for now, I'm just going to use same as page because we're in a test environment, a test site, where no one else is hitting this particular website. Now when we add the module to the page, we get to choose where on the page the module is going to go. We do that by the use of panes. The default skin in .NET Nuke has five panes available to us. Top, left, content, right, and bottom. Now every skin is going to be different in the naming of the panes, where those panes are, and the number of panes that are available. The default skin, like I said, has these five panes available. And currently, the three modules that are on the page are located in the, in the bottom pane. And we could find that by sw switching from edit to layout mode in our control panel. But for now, we're just going to add this module into the content pane. If there were other modules in the content pane already, we can choose if this module should go above or below those modules. And if there are multiple modules in there, we can choose to insert it in between some of those modules as well. Because our content pane is currently empty, we don't have that option. So from here, we can go ahead and just click on Add Module. And that will simply place the HTML module into the content pane on our website. Because we're still in edit mode, we can see the module that shows up here. It has our module title listed there. And then some text that says hover here, then click the toolbar to edit content. Well, the HTML module has some built-in inline editing capabilities. And if you mouse over the content, you can see the little pencil icon show up. We'll go into more details with the HTML module in a future video. But for now, we have the module on the page. If we go ahead and switch into view mode, what you'll see is the module actually goes away. The reason for that, the HTML module is configured that if you don't go through and edit the content, when you go into view mode, the module disappears. 
It's just by design, that's the way that module functions. So what we, we would need to do is go into that module and edit the content, make a change, save that content, and then the module will become visible on the page. Now we can also move the module around on the page. As I said, it's currently in the content pane, and we can see that by switching into the layout mode for our page using the control panel. And when we get to the layout mode, we see the wireframe. So from here, we can choose where we would like to place the module. Right now it's in content pane, so it's gonna stretch out across the width of the page. When left pane and right pane are empty, we can go ahead and move that module into a different pane, utilizing the actions menu next to the title, mousing over the move option, and then choosing from the available panes. Now you'll notice this list of panes is populated with the list of the other panes on the skin. The module is already in the content pane, so you can't move it into the content pane. But I could move it around on this page. I can move it over to the left pane. You can see that layout changes. Now if we switch back to edit mode, the module actually still appears to be in the same location. It does now have a fixed width on it, though. The left pane is set to only stretch so wide based on the layout of this particular skin. Now we can move the module again while we're in edit mode by going to the move option. We can choose to move it back to the content pane or move it to another pane as well. So in a future video, we'll show you how to add additional modules into .NET Nuke to make them available to place them on a page. We'll also go into the details of how you get into the content or into the settings for a module, changing some of the settings, changing the title. You can also change the permissions to make the module visible to all users. So at this point, that concludes our video. Thank you for watching. If you have any other .NET Nuke training needs, please feel free to check out the training page on .NET Nuke.com, located under the Resources tab. And you can also find a collection of free videos there, listings of our upcoming instructor-led training, as well as informa information about our custom on-site and online training options. Thanks again for watching. This is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation.